we are revising count fit now. Count fit is measured using the Giger Muller tube or the GM tube. So, first the construction of the GM tube. In the GM tube, there is basically one anode that is a rod connected to the positive terminal and the tube. Now, the walls of the tube are connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So, that's why the wall act as walls act as a cathode. Now the GM tube is also connected to an amplifier. This is the rate meter. And this is the loudspeaker. This is a mica window which allows radiations to enter and this the space in the tube the space is filled with argon gas now when radiations alpha beta and gamma particles enter the gm tube they ionize those argon the argon gas the positive the uh, cations move towards the positive ions or charges move towards the cathode and the negative charges or ions move towards the anode. This is the anode and the walls act as the cathode. So when those particles hit the anode, pulses are sent towards the amplifier and because of the variation in current and the rate meter which is connected to it shows the reading in counts per minutes while the loudspeaker gives a click sound for each count each pulse so that is the construction of the rate uh, of the gm tube now to use the gm tube first the GM tube is turned on without any radioactive substance kept near it. The reading that is obtained is called the background count fit. This is because of the natural radioactive sources in the environment. When a radioactive substance is kept and its radioactive emissions have to be calculated in counts per minute, the reading that is obtained on the rate meter from that reading, the background count rate that had been calculated before is subtracted to get the reading of the source. Now, the reasons for background count rate, there, the reasons include cosmic radiation from space, radioactive gases like radon and the natural radioactivity present in the ground bricks or building. These ionizing radiations are constantly present in the environment and they are responsible for producing the background content. That's it for country. Half life in which number of radioactive atoms or the, their activity reduces to half of its initial value. It is the due time duration in which the number or the activity of radioactive atoms or nuclei reduces to half of its initial value. Now the formula for half-life is n equal to half Whole 
power n to n not this n stands for the number of radioactive nuclei or atoms after their duration of time this is the number of half lives while this is called n not and it is the initial number of radioactive atoms or nuclei the first question is to calculate the So for this we'll use the formula. We are given n equals to six point two five, and we have to find n naught. So six point two five equals to half whole power four into n naught. This can also be written as. One upon sixteen, so n naught is equal to sixteen into six point two five. That is hundred. So for this question, we'll again use the formula. So if we have n naught as thousand and small n as five, we have to find n. N equals to half whole power five into thousand. So the answer will come thirty one point two five, approximately equals to thirty five. So now for this question,
we have to apply morph logic over here from 400 to 50 we have to find how many half lives there will be now if we multiply 400 with half that would give us 200 so that's one half life 200 into half would give us 100 so that adds two half lives and 100 into half would give us 50 so that is three half lives Therefore, from 400 to 50, three half lives have passed, and this took three minutes. Therefore, to find the time period of one half life, we'll divide three, three half lives by three minutes. So, this is the time duration of one half life. The half life of the material is 24 years and 72 years have passed. So 72 upon 24 will give us 3. This means that 3 half lives have passed. Now, using the formula n is equal to half whole power n into n naught. We have to find the fraction by which the activity has fallen. So for that, we'll have half whole power 3 into n naught. The fraction will come as 1 upon 8. So the answer is 1 upon 8. Now, another question. Now we have to determine the time it takes for So now for this question, the half life is this. These are the number of atoms in the stride, and these have to be the number of atoms at the end. Now, four point 
we'll first use the formula n is equals to half whole power n into n naught. So n over here is equals to 1.5 into 10 to the power 3. n naught here is equals to 4.8 into 10 to the power 4. Now using this, we'll have to find the value of n. 4.8 can be written over here, and it's about 4 can be written over here. Now using log, we'll find the value of n. That is n lg half equals to lg this is coming equals to one upon thirty two. So LG one upon thirty two. Now N equals to LG one upon thirty two upon LG half. So N is equals to Now, what we had to find was the time taken, not the number of half lives. Number of half lives is five, so we use this number to find the time taken. The time for one half life is given as three point three into ten to the power five seconds. Now, five into three point three into ten to the power five. Is this two? One point six five into ten is to the power six seconds. So this is the answer. That's it for our plan.